Howdy everybody. Hey, another video about chamfering. Yes. I guess technically I made a video about chamfering. John Saunders recently did one. But this video is really going to be more about manipulating expressions in Fusion 360. There's also been a couple videos about using expressions. I believe John Saunders did one. Rob Lockwood did one as well. I'll link to everything that I mention in my video description. So if you're watching this video for the second time, or you just want to cut to the chase, you know about expressions, you just want to see where I'm going, basically I'm going to go over what I call a journey arriving at using this expression for your chamfer tip offset. And I've got it written down here, hopefully large enough that you can read it. The last value here, I have set to 0 0.1. At 0 0.1 millimeter, you'll want to change this to whatever your optimal offset is in your, you know, whatever, if you're using imperial or metric or whatever. I'm also going to talk about back chamfering and how I arrived at this expression for doing back chamfers. And that's this one here. This one is probably not something he's going to use, but I, I did the math, so I'm putting it in this video. But basically, all it really evaluates down to is twice your offset here. So, I assume if you're, you know, if you use this as your chamfer tip, tip offset and you have your, you know, the offset that you like here, you'll probably just remember to double it and, you know, make it negative down here. All right, so that's where I'm ending at this video. If you basically can see where I'm going, I'd say probably to turn it off now. You're, you're probably not going to enjoy this, uh, this journey that I'm going to take us down. Okie dokie. So this is uh, basically take 5,000 for me. But hopefully I can uh, power through this time. We'll see. I know I warned you that this is going to be a journey. Uh, <laughs> if I went through everything that I wanted to go through, this would probably be a two hour long video, especially the way that I that I run things. Anyway, I'm going to try to skip a lot of stuff and get directly into sorting out that that uh, expression that I showed earlier. Unfortunately, I'm going to have to take for granted that you guys know some of the basics about chamfering and expressions and stuff. All right, so let's get to it. I've got my mocked up part here, and my goal is to create this chamfer. It's 0.5 millimeters. And I want to create that using my preferred chamfering tool, which is this back chamfer tool. Essentially, what I'm trying to do is get Fusion to put this tool right here. As you can see, the tip of the tool is not making contact with the part, and neither is the corner of the tool here. Also, the size of my chamfer is uh, coming out correct. So I'm getting the right size and I'm using the tool optimally. To do that, we're gonna have to do a little bit of trigonometry. Now I've never taken a trigonometry class, so uh, I guess this is basic trigonometry, but I can't say I understand it, I've just made it work. So let's look at what I mean by that. So the sketch that I used to create this chamfer is right here. And as you can see, I've got the 0.5 millimeter width, as I mentioned. Also, I've set the angle of the tool here at 45 degrees. And I want to use this tool right here, which is a representation of my back chamfer tool. Essentially, 
I want Fusion to put it exactly here. I want the tool path to be exactly here. This gives me a 0.1 millimeter buffer, a 0.5 millimeter chamfer width, and then I'm using basically as much of the diameter of the tool as I can. So the trigonometry stuff that I was talking about is going to be using tangent to calculate oops to calculate this distance right here from this point to here in other words this is our end goal here i want to calculate this to make this a little bit simpler to visualize i get you know some of these dimensions and stuff out of here well i don't know it's i don't know if it's actually that much better but I've created a sketch that is basically the same thing. So this is the triangle that we're going to be using to calculate. And this is the chamfer that we're attempting to take away. You can see it's got a width of 0.5 millimeters. All right. Okay, let's open up this sketch. So we can see our 45 degree angle and we can see that this line has a width of 0.5 millimeters. Also the offset from the tip of the tool to the start of the chamfer is 0.1 millimeter. As I mentioned before, our end goal is to calculate this value right here, 0.9875. Okay, so the first thing we're going to need to do is ascertain this value right here. This one's pretty easy. All we're going to do is going to take the diameter of the tool, which is 6.35 millimeters, Subtract the tip diameter, which is 3.175 millimeters, and divide that by 2. Well, obviously, we have this line here that we're calculating, and then there's an equivalent line here, so there's two of them. We, need to, we only need one. So let's go into the cam of our part to do that. I'm going to take this kind of step by step. So I'll load up my back chamfer tool. And as you can see, this is the value that we're looking for. And I did get that using this expression. But since we're taking it step by step, I'm going to start with zero there. Chamfer width, that's easy. 0.5 millimeters, just enter it in there. All done. Now we need to calculate that line that I showed earlier. Let's see, can I switch to it? Okay, I guess I can't. And as I mentioned, how we're going to do that is we're going to get the diameter, subtract the tip diameter, and divide it by 2. Thankfully, all these values have been entered into the tool table when we created the tool and to access them we just need the correct variable names to enter in here so the diameter variable name is tool underscore diameter the tip diameter is actually tool underscore tip diameter you have to make the d of diameter capitalized divided by two. Uh, I'm sure you guys know that there's an order, order of operations to math, PEMDAS, parentheses, exponents, multiplication, division, addition, and subtraction. So if I hit OK here, we do get a value, but it is not the value we're looking for. Actually, let me hit OK. I forget if I actually showed it. 
the value we're looking for is 1.5875, aka an, in, an eighth of an inch. Alright, so let's fix that. I hope not to do this too many times. So what I gotta do is make sure that the subtraction happens before the division, and the only way to do that is to insert that into parentheses. If I hit OK now, I get that value that, that I was looking for. So cool. We have calculated out the first step that we need, this value here, 1.5875. Okay, next we need this value. Now we couldn't go straight to here because we don't really have anything from the tool table that we can use to calculate this. Technically, for this exact tool, I have the uh, tool's flute length. So I could go tool flute length divided by two, but for something like a mill drill, the tool flute length is going to be something like 20 millimeters, as it is in my mock-up here. So, although, you know, for this exact example, we could use the tool's flute length, we can't uh, rely on that. So, to calculate this line, what we need to do is get this value and divide it by the tangent of this value. And I've got the Microsoft calculator here to show that it actually works. So I want to get 1.5875 divided by the set of 45 degrees tangent, which equals one, by the way, and close the parentheses, equals 1.5875. Again, this is easy because it's a 45 degree angle, but if this was a 60 or something, it would be much more difficult. No, well, I guess let's let's make it a 60 and watch it in action. We'll change this to 60. And now this value is 0.9165. Let's see if a calculator gives us that. We've got 1.5875 divided by 40, whoops, sorry, not 45, 60, tangent, close parenthesis equals 0 0.91654, 0 0.9165, so this, this works here. Okay. So, where can we get these numbers? We got 45 here, but how do we do tangent? Expressions in Fusion 360 are, as far as I can tell, JavaScript. And the JavaScript, okay, let's just, uh, we'll set this aside and copy it, and I'll stick it into a, a notepad document. Okay, so uh, like I was saying, expressions seem to be JavaScript. So what I do is I just, <laughs> if I know there's something I can do, a math function, I look up what it takes to do that in JavaScript. The JavaScript function for tangents is math.tan parenthesis, and you enter in the value that you're trying to get the tangent of. So if, it, if I hit math.tan parenthesis 45 and hit OK here, it gives me a value, 1.61 da da da. I wish that was the end of it, except if I go back to the calculator here and type in 45 tangent, it tells me the value is 1. So what's going on here? Basically, Apparently, JavaScript uses uh, a form of tangent. You know, I don't know why or if it's more correct or what the deal is. But basically, 
it is calculating the tangent of 45 radians, I guess. So what we need to do is convert radians to degrees. And I'll go back to my thing here. Basically, it looks like how you do that is you multiply your radians times pi. So let's just do it the simple way first. Let's just do times 3.1416. Hit equals. And oh, that ain't good. Oh, sorry, I missed a thing here. Now we gotta divide by 180. Yes, all right, divided by 180. Well, that's certainly not going to give us a larger number, is it? Maybe it is. Okay, let's find out. All right, there we go. Yes, one, just like we're looking for. Okay, let's edit this again. And I typed in 3.41, sorry, 3.1416 for pi. But we can actually use a another JavaScript, I guess, a command for this, which is math.py. Apparently, pi is, is capitalized. So as we're taking this slow, let's hit OK. We still get 1, just like we're looking for. We'll edit this again. And since we don't always, we can't assume we're using a 45 degree chamfer, let's change this to the tool taper angle. And hit OK again. Sweet. We still got one, just like we're looking for. So now we want to, if we remember, we're going for one, oops, 1.5875 divided by our number tangent. So we want 1.5875 divided by this, but I'm sure you remember that we actually got 1.5875 calculated out using this math right here. Let's hit OK to this and see if we get 1.5875. Sweet. Okay, so we have now calculated this value, sorry, this value, and we've calculated this value. Next, we need to calculate this value. Now this we know is 0.5, again, because it's a 45 degree angle, but if you know with a 60 degree thing this this value won't necessarily equal our width so let's quickly uh add that to our expression so we want to go we want to put all this together and we're going to subtract the chamfer width divided by this. Let's put all of these together too so that we ensure that they're all put together. And I guess uh, actually let me um let me remove all of this stuff. I'll cut it. I guess uh, for kicks, I'll put it in here. Let's hit OK here. For this expression, we're looking for 0. 0.5. I don't. I don't know if I have this right. Let's find out. All right, sweet. 0. 0.5. And let's put them together now. Okay, so essentially what we're doing at this point is 
the float height minus the chamfer height. 1.5875 minus 0 0.5 is obviously 1.0875. Let's go back to our sketch and kind of see if, if that is the correct number. Actually, I guess I, I can't easily do that, so let's let's not do that. Next, you may recall that we want to have that buffer in there. So I'm going to put negative 0 0.1. Oops. That's our, that's our buffer. And there we go. We have calculated 0 0.9875 which is what we were looking for. Let's give this a simulation to see if it works the way I think it does. All right, there we go. That is our chamfer. I'll assume it is the correct width. We are not cutting with the tip of the tool. And if we look real close, we can see that that buffer I tried to create does exist. So I'm going to assume that we are good here. I'll close this and let's mess with this tool path a little bit. Let's switch tools to this. Uh, well, let's start with a generic chamfering tool. Actually, I hope this doesn't mess it up. This obviously has no tip. So this is zero on the tip. Let's see what happens. I hit OK. We'll just take a look at the passes. Okay, there's our chamfer width, what we set. And it seems I've calculated out 2.575 millimeters. And we'll do a simulation. All right, chamfer width is good. And see it's not doing the tip. Let's see if we get our offset that looks right to me so I think uh, looking pretty good let's mess with it a little more let's say we are using oops let me actually duplicate this tool and oops we'll call it tool 2 and we'll make it a 60 degree chamfer tool. Go over to our passes. We do have some wacky number here. Um, and we'll simulate it. Oh, the stock is not showing. I find if I mess with this and not close it, I. Fusion likes to crash on me, so... Oh, damn, I think it just crashed. Well, uh, I guess I'll come back to this. Alrighty, uh, back up and running. And it looks like Fusion's awesome auto-saving has saved the day as it usually does. So, if I go back into here, look at my expression. That looks pretty, pretty familiar. And those wacky numbers look pretty familiar. So let's simulate it again. Okay. Well, the stock is actually showing. Okay. I'm going to guess that that is indeed 0.5 millimeters wide. And I can see we're not cutting with the tip. And it does appear that we have the 0.1 millimeter bump. Uh, buffer there. So I'm declaring this good. Hopefully that was informative and stuff. But before I let you go, or <laughs> you know, before you go, let's let's talk about back chamfering real quick. When you have a real pre precise buffer between the corner and the geometry that you select, it actually makes back chamfering super easy. So let's edit this and I'll select 
my back chamfer tool here. And instead of doing this geometry, I'll select this down here because I want to, you know, back chamfer it. So in my expressions, I now have that same value worked out. Again, this does, or I, I actually never said this, but this doesn't have any idea that we're doing back chamfering here. So if we hit OK at this point, it's not going to work correctly. But we can use stock to leave to move the tool down. If I check out this expression, you can see a lot of the same kind of gibberish that we just worked through. So I think I'll I'll skip this if you you know if you want to work this out. Uh, awesome, but there it is, and it has given me a value of minus 0 0.2 millimeters. So I'll just hit OK and do a simulation and see what happens. All right, looks like we got that buffer. And bingo bango, we got our chamfer. Pretty awesome. Now, I guess just to horse it, let's change the tool to this, which is a 60 degree back chamfer tool. I'll just hit okay and simulate it. Working great. So as I mentioned before, this value is, is just 0 0.2 millimeters. So you don't really have to mess with all this expression stuff for this one. It, uh, it is, it's just going to work out to double this value, or I should actually say negative 2x times this value. I mean, negative 2 times this value. <laughs> so as a test, let's change this. It looks like we don't have a whole lot to work with here. Oh, 0.5 millimeters, I thought it said 0.2. So let's change this to a quarter millimeter. You know, maybe that's what we think might be better. So this has updated, and this has updated. And if I hit OK, let's see how our back chamfer looks. Looking good. And I guess I just realized that more or less we can use this to kind of maximize how close we can get this tool to the part. So right now I got, you know, 0.377 da 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 da. So I'm thinking I can increase this by 0.37. Let's just do 0.3 to make it, you know, to give us 0.07 the buffer. And before I hit OK, let's check the lead in. Oh, I can't check it until after I hit OK. Okay, we'll look at it from the top. Okay, Ooh. I can actually see that this lead in is going to hit the part. And uh, for anyone who doesn't do back chamfering very often, that's definitely something you got to watch out for. So I'll just increase my linear lead in distance and remove this perpendicular check, which I have set to default for some reason. I find myself unchecking it more than anything. All right, let's simulate it. Let's see how close this thing gets. So, the reason you might want to do something like this is um, let's see why would you do this I don't know I guess if you were going through a very narrow slot you might do that and that seems silly I guess really where this would be more useful 
is to maximize the amount of chamfer you can get out of this. Let's set this back to the 0.1 millimeter buffer that we're looking for. Let's just click up here. All right, looks like we can get a 1.3 millimeter chamfer out of this. Let's try it. Oh, right. Let's uh, make sure we're not running into the stock while we do this. It's quite a big chamfer. Well, at least for, for a tool like this. Cool. I uh, think I have yammered on enough. Okay, I'm back. One more thing. If you're a very keen observer and actually, you know, maybe following along with this, you may have noticed that this expression differs from the one that I showed at the beginning. And basically the only reason that is, well, I guess one reason might be that I messed it up or something, but uh, I tried to reduce this down to a shorter expression, a little bit less computation and easier to copy down, a little easier to follow what's, what, you know, the, the progression of it and stuff. So this is just the reduced version of what I worked out in the video. Okay, bye bye again. Uh, Happy New Year. That's right. See you guys.